I think most of you know that uh, most nights I go pretty steady at it pretty late, yes? Yes, you know that, right? And it's a great temptation. I have to restrain myself from sending you emails like at 3 o'clock in the morning. I really do, right? So I like to wind down at the end of the day, somewhere like 12, 12, 30, quarter to 1. I'll scroll through Facebook for a few minutes, like I'll find out that we're celebrating Ray's birthday, that Mark and Lori Ann are going to be planning a wedding that happened yesterday, right? You find out all those things, and like Liz last night was doing the bar crawl up and down Pearl Road. Once I get to that level of information, I, I say I got to go find something else. I'm only kidding, right? <laughs> right? So then I turn to just wonderful TV. There's 600 channels, and I land on like there's nothing on. There really isn't. So I watch the NASA channel. Did you know that NASA has a channel? Did you know that NASA has a channel? It's very exciting, right? <laughs> it really was the other night. It was very fascinating because they're getting ready for tomorrow, which is the launch of? Artemis. Artemis. Well, three people know this, right? This is huge. Tomorrow, big ship going up in the air. We're going back to the moon eventually. Tomorrow, we launch Artemis. Very exciting, yes? Contain that excitement, right? You should watch the interview at quarter to one in the morning, right? And it really was fascinating. They had four people that had been very instrumental in, in kind of getting us back to the launch pad, if you will. And it really was fascinating, intriguing. If you listen to each of them, giving their perspective, sharing their information, you could really sum it up in three points. The first was this. So they, uh, they, were, they were talking very much about their involvement and the, the whole thing unfolding. And every one of them said that it was an absolutely humble privilege to be chosen to be part of this team, to do something so spectacular, so amazing, so overwhelming. None of them talked about how like they're the best and the smartest. They all talked about what a humble privilege, a humble privilege to be chosen to be a part of this team. The second thing all of them talked about from each of their different perspectives, all of them talked about they have such an awareness that every person and every part is absolutely equally essential. Think about that for a moment. Like, if the guy doesn't hit this button or if the fuels are all the pieces, every person, every part, equally essential. And the third thing all of them reflected on, again, what, a, what an opportunity to be a part of something so much bigger, so much larger than themselves, or even just getting a rocket on the moon. They all had such an awareness that they were part of a much greater mission that was going on. A humble privilege to be chosen. Every part, every person, equally essential, and that they individually and collectively were part of such a much bigger mission. Artemis, watch tomorrow. It's going to go up in the air, God willing. Amen? Amen. And I think if Jesus were walking the face of the earth today and telling parables like he did in the gospel, while today he uses a wedding feast, I think he would have used the Artemis experience. Why? Because what is Jesus saying and what is the scripture proclaiming today? First of all, that it's a humble privilege to be chosen by the Lord. It's a privilege. We often don't think of it. Like even being able to come here, we don't think of it as a privilege often. But it is a humble privilege to be selected, to be chosen by the Lord. As you unpack that gospel parable, every single one of us are equally important and essential in the eyes of God. And all of us have a way to contribute into the life of this much greater mission. And what is the greater mission? to build the kingdom of God, both now and forever. Today's gospel continues the gospel that we heard last weekend. And it's all about not only preparing for the kingdom ourselves individually, 
but along the way bringing everyone else we can think of equally essential with us on this journey to build a kingdom of justice and peace now so that we can find our eternal reward in the fullness of time. I think Jesus, if he listened to those interviews, could have actually used the Artemis experience. The scriptures each unpack that everything good we can do, everything we have, is a gift from the Lord. That's what humility means in the eyes of God. And that each of us, wonderfully equipped by God, are equally essential, every one of us important, in the mind, in the heart of the Lord. And that when all of us come together, we engage in a, a mission so much bigger than ourselves. As we walk into the week, take some time today on this glorious, glorious day to reflect on the blessings of God in your life. Humility is having a clear mindfulness that everything we have, everything that we can do, is a gift from the Lord. And it is a humble privilege to be endowed and called by God to use those gifts and talents. Secondly, everyone is equally important in the eyes of God. Amen? Amen. Go about this week saying hello and greeting everyone that you meet. Why? Because greeting the stranger, if you will, is an exercise in, an, in unconditional love. The gospel says, don't expect any repayment. So if you say hello, have a great day, chances are you're going to hear nothing back. Amen? I had that experience this morning at Duncan, right? But that doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. It's an exercise of unconditional love. We give away kindness, thoughtfulness, and the greeting of hospitality because everyone is equally important in the eyes of God and the building up of God's kingdom. And thirdly, all of us have a way that we can contribute to this much greater mission. Coming in your mail this week, online already, is our fall newsletter. There truly is something here for everyone at St. Ambrose. Amen? Amen? Amen find a way to contribute to the greater mission. Why? Because if all of us do that together, we may not put somebody on the moon, but more importantly, we will build a better, stronger community, better, stronger families, and we will do the work that God has entrusted to our care. Building God's kingdom both now so that we can enjoy it forever and ever. Amen.